All right, so in this video, we're going to continue talking about operations on sets, binary operations on sets for Math 2090. Uh, and we're going to look at some examples now. Okay. Now, there's a few that we mentioned last time, and, and we will come back to these and, and look at them more carefully in class in context, and I don't think we'll, we'll deal with them now. Um, because, you know, we, we're fairly familiar with these, right? So multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, these are all examples of binary operations that take um, two elements of a set as inputs, give you a, a new element, hopefully, of that set as an output. We talked about the fact that um, if, if the output always belongs to the same set as the inputs, then, then you're set is closed under that operation. So this closure property is usually pretty important. Um, and you sometimes might also have to pay attention to issues like whether any two inputs can be used to get an output, or maybe the, maybe the operation is not defined for every pair of inputs that you might choose. Right? So for example, um, division you've got to watch out for because, you know, Division doesn't work if you're dividing by zero, so we can't look at inputs where the second, uh, the second element in that input is zero. Um, you'll get something which doesn't make any sense. Um, so there may be some issues like that to consider, but um, we will deal with that again in class. So these are things that I think we want to discuss more carefully. Um, so let's look at some other examples. Um, even if we just stick to the natural numbers, you can you can come up with examples where you just define like, you know, a silly addition or, or a silly multiplication. So we might define something like, uh, we'll define a new operation, you know, maybe plus with a circle around it. Uh, and we'll define this by saying, oh, well, maybe it's, uh, it's a minus three b, uh, plus one, right? So you could, you could make a definition like this, um, and then you could even, you know, you could start, you could even start doing like a, like a table for the operation, right? Um, you could say, okay, what happens when we take, say, one, two, three, you know, as inputs, one, two, three, right? So if we do one plus one, what do we get? We get, uh, well, maybe let's do plus so we don't, uh, so we don't run outside the set. So we did say uh, 1 plus 3 times 1 plus 1, so 1 plus 3 plus 1 more, 5, right? Uh, 1 time 1 plus 2, so if we, if we do this for the first input, this for the second input, uh, 1 plus 3 times 2, so 1 plus 6, 7 plus 1 more, I get uh, 8. 1 plus, or O plus, I guess let's call it O plus. 1 O plus 3, I get 1, 3 times 3 is 9. So 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 1 more is, uh, is 11, and, and so on. <coughs> Actually, maybe you can probably guess what the pattern is going this way. You're, you're counting up by 3s as you go along, right? The next one, 1 O plus 4, you're going to get 14, then 17, and so on. Uh, as you go down, if we did 2, 2 O plus 1, so then we're doing 2 plus 3 times 1, so 2 plus 3 plus 1 more, uh, you get 6, right? And then 2 O plus 2, so 2, 3 times 2 is 6, so 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 1 more, uh, 9, and you can check the next one's going to be 12, and so on, and then We'll do it for three. And actually, you can kind of see what's happening here. You can probably guess what this row is going to be because now we're, we're increasing this input by one each time, and that makes the sum go up by one. So then seven, um, eight. Oh, not eight, right? Uh, we go up by one, going the wrong direction. It's going to be 10, 7, 10, 13, and so on. And, and you, know, you could fill out the table. Um, 
One of the things that you might notice with this one, um, you know, some of the properties that you're used to having for things like addition and multiplication, um, you might notice that, for example, that's not the same thing uh, as doing B O plus A, right? Um, 1 plus 2 gives me 8, 2 plus 1 gives me 6, you get different answers. Um, right, and so you can, you can play around with examples like this. You can, you can find, define sort of silly additions, silly multiplications. You can create sort of the, the, the table for that operation. You can see what you get. Um, and actually, sometimes these are good exercises just to play around and, you know, start filling out the tables and see what sort of patterns you get, right? What, what other sort of patterns can you identify, right? You know, we see going up by three is going this way, going up by one, going down that way. You might also say, what about like, let's say diagonal. So if you do a diagonal going this way, hey, you're going up by four each time. You might guess that over here there should be a 17, right? Um, what about if I do a diagonal this way? Oh, I'm going, looks like I'm going down by twos always, right? And so you can, Sometimes it's fun just to make these up to see what kind of patterns you get when you write down the tables. Um, interesting things can happen. Um, we'll, we'll probably do a few of these as examples in class. We'll, we'll throw a few of them on the worksheet and we might even just say, all right, fill out the table, see if you can find any interesting patterns. Okay. Um, so I think this, you know, just to give you an example of, of something that you haven't seen before, um, here's, um, here's a, another example. We might do, uh, let's take some set of names. Um, and, and so let's say we do name, names that are on the form, you know, first name, uh, last name. You know, so we include first and last. And, and we'll, do, uh, we'll do this operation here. Um, let's, I don't know, let's give, we need a symbol for it. Um, I'll call it star. And, and so it's going to be, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, um, so we'll take one name. So let's say, let's just do an example. Let's say, uh, Joe Smith times, times, I don't know. That looks like a times to me. Um, times, I don't know, Mary, what's the, let's say Mary Newman. There we go. And, and the operation is going to be this. It's going to be that you always take the, the first name from the first person and the second name from the second person, and you combine them together to get a new name. Uh, let's see. So I guess it's going to be Joe, Joe Newman. All right. Um, so there, there's another, well, it's a binary operation, right, on a set of names. Um, I don't know how big that set has to be to, to include everything, right? If you went with us, let's, let's and, you know, maybe we'll play this as a game in class. We'll see what happens. If, uh, if we took our set to be just the, the names of people in the class, um, chances are that, you know, well, obviously the set's not going to be closed under this operation. If I take any two people and ask you to combine your names in this way, you probably are not going to come up with the name of somebody else in the class. Um, actually, it'd be interesting to see if there are any two people that we can combine to get somebody else who is in the class. Probably not. I don't know. Um, we can play around with this. Um, I'm going to stop here because the video is uh, already, I'm seeing at eight minutes. Um, and we're going to continue. I'm going to do one more um, collection of examples that I think is worth seeing. And then we're going to move on. We're going to talk about some of the properties that these operations have.